Marcy, Skylight, Gray, Cliff, and Redfield done. Now the long walk back to the lodge. 3.55 a.m., just signed in. Santanoni range, let's go. The wind is whipping here in the Seward range today. Just finished the Macomb slide and my legs are on fire. Well, I fell victim to the floating logs again. Made it to the top of East Dix. Peak number three of five for today here in the Walking Dix range. Along Avalanche Pass. On top of Rocky Peak Ridge, it's like a hurricane up here. Rain and wind here on Tabletop. Whiteface, number six. Muddy day here on Street and Nye for number seven and eight. Sunny and blue on Haystack. Algonquin, up in the clouds, number 18. Gothics, number 22. Panther, number 38. Allen, number 45. 7, 12 a.m., big slide, Adirondack, 46er. You're listening to the 46 of 46 podcast. August 12th, 2018. A dozen day hikes in and 37 mountains down. I'm now on to lucky number 13 on my quest to hike all 46 high peaks of the Adirondacks in one summer. Today was the Santanoni Range, Panther, Cooksacraga, and Santanoni. I repeatedly asked Josh, begged him to come hike this range with me because I was a bit nervous due to its remoteness and reputation, but he wasn't interested. So it was time to hike solo yet again on this 16 mile hike with roughly 5,000 feet of elevation gain. My itinerary for the day was to hike in towards the Bradley Pond lean-to on the Bradley Pond Trail, go up Panther first, then Cooksacraga, back to Times Square and over to Santanoni where I'll go down the Santanoni Express, completing the loop and back to the parking lot. So like every night before a solo hike, I could barely sleep due to my nerves and going over the route in my head thousands of times, and I decided at 1 a.m. after only going to bed at 9.30, that it was time to just get up because quality sleep clearly wasn't going to happen. And knowing I had a roughly 90 minute drive to the trailhead, I decided to get going sooner rather than later. So I was out the door earlier than I ever had yet and began driving from Saranac Lake to the Santanoni trailhead on the Upper Works Road. Upon arriving there, it was as you'd expect, dark and quiet. As I arrived, I prepared my pack and I started to feel something weird, a killer up inside of me. And for the first time ever, I went number two in the woods. So I went into the woods, far from the parking lot, and took care of my business. And I must say, it was a more delightful experience than I anticipated it being. I went back to my car, grabbed my gear, and it was time to go. I signed into the trailhead at 3.55 a.m. and started walking down the dirt road into the wilderness. It's around 1.5 miles down this road until taking a right into the woods onto the Bradley Pond Trail. And I must say, due to the hour and where I was and being solo, I found myself even more nervous out there than usual. Hearing every noise in the woods around you, knowing if something goes wrong, you're far from any sort of help. So I grabbed my earbuds and threw one in my left ear and listened to some music while I walked. Rise Against acoustic album Ghost Note Symphonies is what I listened to. And despite having done so many solo hikes and always starting around 4.30, there was just something different about today and about this trail. The music helped calm my nerves tremendously during this beginning portion of the hike, and I eventually came to the DEC Bradley Pond Trail on the right into the woods. So on to the trail I went. This trail runs along a river the majority of the time, and it winds through the woods and along and in the river some, some rock hopping and welcomed plank bridges in very muddy spots. Since it was still the middle of the night, I could only hear the river, but I couldn't see it. Later in the day on my way out, I'd finally see and how great it was. But I soon came to the trail junction for the Santanoni Express, which is marked by a good-sized cairn. Since my plan for today was to start with Panther, I went right at the cairn towards the Bradley Pond. Around half a mile after this junction, I came to Bradley Pond and a nice wooden sign pointing me left up to Times Square along with a small cairn. The sign looked relatively new, and I did find it interesting that it doesn't say Panther, but it says Times Square, since that's just a nickname for a little area up there. Though since these are unmarked trails, I guess it makes sense the sign doesn't say Panther. Nonetheless, I'll take some additional signage any day. If you miss this junction, which I don't think you will, and you end up at the Bradley Pond lean-to, just backtrack a little bit. The lean-to is near this junction, though I don't think you'll miss the sign. So I was now on the Panther Brook Trail herd path and the real climbing began after a short trip down and around Bradley Pond. The trail was a good mile and a half of constant elevation gain. A classic Adirondack herd path trail. Exposed slippery roots, muddy, winding through the forest. 
I was very fortunate today that I had great sunny weather because in my head I always pictured hiking this range in rain and crappy weather, so it was great to have a sunny day here. There were a couple moments I remember having to look around and make sure I'm on the trail still, but overall it was fairly easy to follow. Once getting above Panther Brook, you're probably a quarter mile or so from Times Square, the top of the ridge you're climbing, so you'll know you're close once you're above the river. With that in mind, I made it to Times Square in relatively good time. Here there are two rocks with carvings in them. One says P for Panther with an arrow pointing right, and another rock says TS for Times Square with an arrow pointing left. So I went to the right towards Panther, and since it's only about 0.2 miles to the summit from this point, it was around 10 minutes or so, maybe even less, to the summit. It didn't take long, and once I came out of the tree line onto the Panther summit, I was thrilled at the unexpected views and the summit itself. It's great! I don't know why people say there are no views here. This summit is like a miniature version of the cooler Adirondack summits like Skylight or Algonquin. Much smaller, not as massive as those mountains, but still way better than I expected and way better than many summits, so that was an unexpected surprise. It might even be the best summit out of all the unmarked mountains of the high peaks. So I summited Panther at 7.32 a.m., roughly three and a half hours from signing in for peak number 38 with an elevation of 4,442 feet. Despite seeing a wooden sign like most herd path mountains have, there was definitely no sign on the top of this peak. It must have come down at one point or another recently. I had a feeling this would be the best peak of the day, so I dropped my pack and I ate a sandwich and stayed up there for around 15 minutes, taking in the great views of Santanoni and Cooksacraga. It was nice knowing what the remainder of my day looked like as they were standing right in front of me, both literally and figuratively. I will say, knowing that some of the high peaks are actually under 4,000 feet, I do find it odd that the Marshall Brothers and Herb Clark thought Cooksacraga was over 4,000 feet. Because while you're on Panther, it just doesn't seem like a high peak, as there are other mountains around it that seem to be pretty much the same size, and they just look significantly smaller. But what do I know? Anyways, it was time to move on and continue my day. Thankfully, the sun was out, my nerves were gone, and I was just hiking now, same as any other day. No sign of people yet, and I hurried back to Times Square, past the carved stones to the actual Times Square, which was a lot less grand than I anticipated it being. With a name like Times Square, I felt like it would be this big, cool, grand spot. But it's really just a flat, coal, maybe 15-foot radius, and some trail junctions. But it's cool. So once getting here, you can take a right down the trail towards Cooksacraga, or you can go left around the boulder over to Santanoni. So I went right towards Cooksacraga. The trip down to Cooksacraga goes down and down and down and down and down some more and then down some more. Some steep parts, but you lose a lot of elevation. Oh, did I mention the trail goes down? Okay, it goes down if I didn't mention it. There are some nice openings on this journey and a great view at various points. It's a three-mile round trip out and back from Times Square, so this mountain definitely took some time to accomplish. And after around 30 minutes or so, I was there. Not the summit. I was at the Cooksacraga Bog, staring it right in the face. This godless stretch of trail is a giant swampy mess with no good route, but it was time to conquer it. I would not fall victim to this bog like I did at the floating logs. So I took some time and I mapped out my tentative journey. I went to the left and I found a few decent logs and began the trek through it. It was go time. Midway through, I came to a point of no return, and I was stuck. Crap. I looked around and saw no good route, so I decided to backtrack a few steps and hop a different log that made all the difference. And then I made it across unscathed, and not too wet. Thank God for trekking poles, because I definitely don't think I'd have been as successful without them. So I was across the bog and ready to climb the wooded trail up to the shortest high peak of them all. The trek down to the bog is the longest mileage of this hike, and once across the bog, it's a relatively quick hop, skip, and a jump to the summit. Not too long or difficult. Just some nice woods trails as you're going up. And I soon came to the wooded summit of Cooksacraga, high peak number 39, and elevation-wise, the smallest of all the 46, standing at a mere 3,820 feet. It was 9.20 a.m. for my second peak of the day, and this one was tough, I'm not going to lie. For being the shortest high peak, it certainly makes you work for it. The summit has a sign and is mostly wooded with some views over the trees if you're tall enough. This mountain is often listed as people's least favorite high peak on their 46er registration forms, and I can't say I blame them. 
it has some unique qualities to it, but it doesn't rank high on my list either. Knowing I had to cross back through the bog, I was pretty anxious to get moving, so I didn't stay too long up top. And I quickly came back to the bog, and for reasons I still don't understand today, I took a different route across than I did the first time. I have no idea why. It proved successful, but for some reason I went a different way. I went right down the center. This time across, I decided to use my waterproof boots to my advantage and said, Okay, if my boots go under for just a couple seconds, it'll be okay. They're waterproof. So I did a lot of hopping and fast movements across the bog where my boots went in the water on probably every other step for just a second or two. It was as if I was jumping across a swamp filled with alligators, stepping on their heads one by one as fast as possible. And I made it much faster than the first time through. I made it pretty unscathed. So now it was time to start climbing back up, 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 up. Time to reclimb and regain all that elevation loss from before. So I was grabbing roots and climbing up. About halfway up, I came across my first human of the day, a teenager from my hometown of Lake Placid, New York, who was hiking in tennis sneakers and a Jan Sport backpack. He started before the sun came up as well, but he went up the Santanoni Express first. Kind of a nerdy kid, a little awkward, as most teenagers are. But as a fellow solo hiker and from Lake Placid, he is my same tribe. Props to him for being out on this trail solo, especially this range, and at his age. Nice kid. We had a quick chat, and he informed me of how steep the Santanoni Express Trail is and that it will be tough to go down it as opposed to up. So now I had that thought in my mind and said to myself, Man, should I have done this route the other way? Well, too late now. So we went our separate ways. I was almost back to Times Square when I passed my second group for the day. A couple, a guy and a girl, probably my age, in their early 30s or so, asking me if they were almost at Times Square, to which I confusingly responded, uh, you guys already passed Times Square. This is the trail to Cooksacraga. What? How did we miss it? She responded as she asked her presumably boyfriend or husband. Where was it exactly, he wondered. I told them they must have just missed it as I was almost back up there and then explained what it looked like. It's like a 15-foot clearing, a couple trails, a giant boulder, you know, a little coal-looking area. Oh, man, yes, that's just back there. Wow, I guess I expected Times Square to be much bigger than that, he said. My thoughts entirely. They were planning to hit Cooksacraga first, then Panther, then Santanoni, which isn't a bad plan, getting the furthest peak accomplished first. So they were lucky that they accidentally stumbled upon the correct trail. Nice people. I got back to Times Square three hours after I left the summit of Panther, so it definitely took me a good chunk of time to bag Cooksacraga and get back to Times Square. But once here, I went around the giant boulder and headed towards the mighty Santanoni. It's about a mile to the summit and not too strenuous until the climb to the summit. The herd path trail follows the Times Square ridgeline until the final climb to the top, so it's not too difficult at all. The sun was still shining, and it was a great summer's day on the trail. I made it to the wooded summit of Santanoni at 11.53 a.m., 4,607 feet elevation, the 14th highest peak and high peak number 40. 4-0. It was at this point that it started to feel real. That after growing up in Lake Placid and never taking advantage of the mountains in my own backyard and never dreaming of actually becoming a 46er, that I was going to become one. A truly wonderful feeling. I was super close. Just before the wooded summit, there's a great opening with fantastic views, so I walked back to this point after summiting and I ate my sandwich and hung out there for a little while. Another hike summiting all of my peaks of the day before noon, so I was pretty pleased about that. And while I ate a sandwich, a Canadian man and his son passed me and went to the summit before coming back to the same spot to eat snacks. They both had a can of tuna fish. Kill me. Gross. But to each their own. I started chatting with them and found out they camped at the Bradley Pond lean-to the night before, and they hit Panther and Cooksacraga the day before, and Santanoni today, and they were going to head home. I asked them how steep the express trail was and if they think it will be tough going down. Uh, no, it's not that bad. Nothing to be worried about he said in his Canadian accent. A slightly different opinion from my new teenage friend from Lake Placid had earlier. So I packed up my gear and headed down the mountain, waiting for the moment of steepness where I was going to say, yup, this sucks. About 10 minutes into my hike down, I passed a group coming up and asked them as well, is the trail really as steep as I've heard? Will it be tough going down? And with their eyes as big as they could get, all of them shook their heads and said, yup. Oh, great. So at that point, I'm continuing to get many mixed reviews, and I thought, I'm sure it's fine. 
and fortunately for me, it was. The trail is steep and there's plenty of slab climbing, holding roots to get down, some butt sliding, but overall, 